Hey, we're finishing up talking about uh, Paul's encounter with the resurrected Jesus, and today we're looking at um, the peace that came over the church and its growth. But before we do that, let's point out that there's some irony here that Luke is employing because of the, uh, the way he starts this next paragraph. You remember yesterday, Paul <laughs> got into trouble the Hellenistic Jews were wanting to kill him. They were plotting to kill him. And the the other people in the church, the, the brethren, they heard about it. And they said, you know what? We got to get this guy out of town. The best place for him is just to go home where some people know him and can love him. And I don't know, maybe calm him down a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what they wanted to do. But uh, it's kind of funny. My brother just sent me a text. But anyway, we'll go on. We'll just ignore that, okay? Does that happen to you? It happened to me just now. I didn't want to start over, so we're going to keep going. Anyway, um, so the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed peace, being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it continued to increase. Now, as I finish that up, let me, let me point out a couple of things. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria. Now, Jesus said that you will be my heralds. You will herald me as the king, beginning in Jerusalem, Judea, going to Samaria, uh, throughout Galilee, and to the ends of the earth. So the first part of this mission is already being accomplished. Throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, enjoyed peace. Now, that means shalom in the Hebrew. Uh, it was the word irene in Greek is co-opted to carry the weight of the Hebrew word shalom, or at least to carry the idea of shalom, which means more than just uh, peacefulness. It means, number one, peace with God. Number two, peace with yourself. And because of that, because of peace with God, you have peace with yourself and you can have peace with other people because of that, because that has been, we've been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. So they enjoyed this peace. Now that means also the lack of conflict. They're not in conflict at this point. So they enjoyed shalom, which means they had a lack of nothing. Uh, there is fullness. There is wholeness that is there within the congregation. There's no fighting going on. No one's trying to stamp them out. And the, the thing that I find funny is, is the language that is used. Therefore, or so, because they shipped Paul back to Tarsus, uh, the church enjoyed shalom. And, uh, you know, we as pastors like to think that when we're shipped out of one church that they don't enjoy peace because we're gone. Uh, we like to think that that's not the case, but that was the case with Paul. Anyway, they were being built up, edified at uh, uh, Oikonomia. They were being built up, strengthened growing up. Now, that's not growth numerically. That's not what that word means in this particular case. It means they were growing in their knowledge. They were growing in their fellowship. They were growing in their faith. All of that was part of it. And that's important for church as well. We oftentimes focus merely on numerical growth, evangelistic growth or transfer growth, whatever it might be. And we fail to recognize that just as legitimate, just as also part of making disciples, yes, evangelism is a big part of that, but also part of making disciples is teaching them everything uh, I have told you, uh, instructing, teaching, growing. Fellowship is a part of that as well. Uh, so part of discipleship is growing in fellowship, growing in faith, growing in knowledge, growing in our walk with the Lord, growing our knowledge of the Word. And then part of growth is making disciples evangelistic growth. But this one is talking about being built up. That oikonomia means to be built up in the faith, being built up in their knowledge, being built up in their fellowships, their relationships, growing stronger. And then it follows that with going on in the fear of the Lord. Now, that word fear there, phobos, it also means to revere in the reverence of the Lord, not cowering over in a corner terrified. That's not what God wants. God wants us to recognize and to revere him as our creator and as our, why don't you people knock it off? You ever feel like saying that? Well, I just did. I have people interrupting me. It's my brother and my sister are talking about a steak place. I'm fasting right now and can't eat, so I don't really care anyway. Um, 
They were going on in the reverence of the Lord and in the comfort. Now, I would translate this word uh, that is used here as comfort. Uh, that's the paraklesis. The, uh, another, form, another way of talking about the Holy Spirit is uh, parakletos, uh, the comforter or the encourager. The word family means one who is called alongside of to give support. It was actually a term for a, a legal aid in court. Um, and that's the way it's translated sometimes. I think rather than comfort, I don't know that they needed comfort. I would translate that word encouragement. And in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was encouraging them. How was he encouraging them? To grow in, because of shalom being present, to grow in their faith, to grow in their reverence for the Lord, their worship of the Lord, to grow in their fellowship, to grow in their relationships, and the church continued to increase numerically. So I think all of those things need to be present in a healthy church. And the church needs to be enjoying shalom, being at peace. The church needs to enjoy being built up in relationship, fellowship, discipleship, growing in knowledge, growing in, uh, in, in reverence with the Lord, going on in the reverence of the Lord. And in the, we need that encouragement of the Holy Spirit. How do we gain that? Well, we gain that through prayer. We gain that through being in the Word. We gain that through uh, sharing with one another as they were doing. And we need to continue to increase. That means evangelism. We need to be evangelizing. And this world desperately needs to be hearing the gospel. Needs to, we need to be heralding that Jesus is the King and and talking of the, this peace that comes, this shalom that comes only through Jesus Christ and being made right with God. And then we can be at peace in ourselves. We can be at peace with, because we're at peace with God and peace with ourselves, we can be at peace with our fellow humans uh, and certainly within the church. And so throughout all of this, we have seen how Paul, because of his experience with with the resurrected Christ, has a ministry. And that leads to growth in the church, that leads to faithfulness with the church, and it leads to um, the, the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. And I pray you belong to a fellowship like that. I pray you belong to a congregation that is called, whatever the name of it is, that is part of the body of Christ, and then you can experience that. Listen, if you don't have that place, if you don't have that where, uh, where you can go and worship and be strengthened, encouraged in the Holy Spirit where you can be at peace, shalom, the shalom of God is present, and where you can grow in knowledge and relationship and fellowship. If you don't have that, then I invite you to come to Troy First Baptist. We say that's the place where you belong, and that's a double thing. We think you belong with us, and we know that if you come, you'll find a place to belong. And our worship is at 9.30. Uh, that's this Sunday at 9.30. That's all we're doing right now. And I said I would say something about that on Friday, and today's Friday. Well, here it is. The staff and I met with the deacons of the church, and it was decided that we would begin uh, opening Sunday school up. I don't want to say about Wednesday yet because there's some things going on, so I want to hold off on that before we say Wednesday's going to crank up. But small groups on Sunday will start up on Jan January, June 28th, uh, June 28th. That's the end of this month, the last Sunday of the month. We'll still be meeting at 9.30 for Sunday worship, and then we'll go to our small groups at um, 10.45. So 9.30 to 10.30 worship, 10.45 to whenever you feel like leaving. Is We won't have a time set on that. That's up to you guys. Um, if you want to come and be a part of that, please come on. And to my church members, please help me promote that. We want to see this work. I think you'll, if you try it, you'll enjoy it. Uh, and it's just something to do different uh, so that we still maintain our 930 worship time that we, we have online. Um, this Sunday, you're going you're gonna to see, I have talked with the deacons and with budget and finance. There's going to be a couple of things for you to vote on. We don't have business meetings yet couple of things for you to vote on. I will get that in written form this Sunday. We'll vote on it next Sunday. That would be Father's Day. It would just be a quick vote. Um, you'll have the information in paper form. You could take that home with you, and then we'll vote on it on Father's Day Sunday. 
I look forward to seeing you each and every day. I look forward to especially seeing you this Sunday, 9.30. We're going to be finishing up Blinded by the Light, part two. We'll be looking at um, Paul's experience of the resurrected Jesus and the impact it had upon him and on the life of the church. Uh, hey, listen, I love you. More important than God loves you. Gave your son Jesus to die for your sins and to give you eternal life and to give you joy indescribable right here and right now. I pray that you know that. Listen, hope to see you Sunday. Bye.